my dear listeners, it is just after midnight. I am in the veranda, hoping this cool night air settles my spirit a bit. So why am I up this late? I will get to that shortly, but let me take a minute to say hello to Renee, who has not missed an update, even though she jumps at every strange noise, especially at night. Thank you for listening, Renee. A few listeners chastised me for driving to Bethany the other night, but mentioned they were still glad because they were hoping to get the mobby on what was going on. And thanks to you for your concern and your honesty. Now, Gina phoned me a few minutes ago to inform me that Harry was brought into the accident and emergency department vomiting and complaining of an excruciating headache. She said his aunt, Helen, was very anxious and was trying her best to calm him. Soon after, he began bawling and shouting, What have I done? What have I done? That man seemed to be at his breaking point because after that he began to unburden his soul and what a burden this man was carrying. Harry had received a phone call that evening from Anne to let him know the grand plan had worked, the debt was paid, and he could go ahead and burn the body. You see, Anne paid Harry and Winston to dig up Archibald the day he was buried. The gravediggers stashed the body in a dump freezer in Codrington Gully, and then told Marcy that if she didn't pay up, she would raise her dead husband to haunt her. Anne also paid Harry to walk around Bethany a few times, wearing a suit of clothes she had belonging to Archibald. Now, the widow, on hearing about not one, but two sightings of Mr. John, called Anne in a panic and told her to come and get her money. Bear with me, dear listeners. As I told you before, the plot is thickening. And right now, it is as thick as cuckoo. Harry decided he wanted no further part in the scheme beyond what he'd already done, which was digging up a body. So he paid a friend to do the second deed. Now when Harry called his friend, to, you know, let him know to wrap everything up. Things were done. The friend reported there was nothing to wrap up. He never dressed up as Archibald and went into Bethany. He blew the money on a visit to Nielsen Street. Nielsen Street is a street where liquor and ladies freely flow. Enough said. Now, given Richard and Angus's recent testimonies, Harry began to feel uneasy. And it was what he said happened after the phone call with Anne and his friend that made Helen collapse against an orderly in a dead faint. The corpse had vanished. When Harry had rushed to Codrington Gully to burn the body, the freezer was empty. Where is Archibald John's body? Or should I ask, where is Archibald John? What do you think is happening here, listeners? Drop a comment on Black Pines broadcast on Instagram 
I would love to hear your theories. I will talk to you soon, folks. Bye-bye.